Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about budget tooling. When I first got into CNC with my CNC converted Grizzly G0704, I bought a lot of this TTS, Tormach TTS stuff, and then I bought even more of it when I bought my Tormach. This is actually one of the most expensive tools I had ever bought before I ended up buying my Haas. This is a DiJet QM Mini. This is something that Tormach sells, and the head itself is about 200 bucks. You have to buy the inserts. I think I spent about 80 bucks on the inserts. And then these arbors are relatively inexpensive. You have the medium, short, and long. And the tooling, all in all, really wasn't all that expensive when I was using the Tormach and my converted Grizzly. But when you get into the Haas mills, you can spend, when you get into like a, a true industrial mill, whatever it is, Fidel, Haas, you know, any, any you know, Makino, Mazak, whatever, you start talking about some serious money that can be spent on tooling and tool holders. We knew we wanted to kind of get going right off the rip and do some roughing and kind of learn the machine. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I knew we needed something to get started. So I ended up buying an inexpensive eight piece or I don't know, eight, eight tool holder set off Amazon for 400 bucks or so. And this happens to be one of those tool holders right there. And so uh, it's actually worked out pretty well. But before I get too much into the tool holders, I really wanted to know how much runout was actually in our spindle. So check this out. As you guys can see right here, there's literally less than a 10th of run out in the spindle in the Haas. And this is my Mitutoyu tense indicator. What's even more surprising is that when we actually put in one of these inexpensive Amazon-based Cat 40 taper tool holders and we check the taper inside the tool holder itself, it's only about a 10th out, which is even, I was just blown away. I couldn't believe that one of these super inexpensive tool holders had that little of run out. And today we use primarily Martool tool holders and we have a couple of Sandvik tool holders as well. But I really do think that these things have a place. I'm really picky. I always wipe everything down with WD-40. I always put a dab of grease on the pull stud when, when a tool holder's been out of the machine for a little while. I always wipe it down with my hand just to make sure there's nothing on it before it goes back up in the taper. You know, value and budget-based, you know, anything has its place. And if it didn't, we wouldn't have places like Walmart. We wouldn't have places like Harbor Freight. Like the, the, it is what it is. And I know there's gonna be a lot of guys that just start hating on the stuff because it's obviously made in China, but China makes some pretty high-end stuff too. Our brand new Mitsubishi EDM machine actually was made in China. China can make good stuff, but they can also make crap, right? The issue is, what is the, what is the application for something like this? Why would you buy something like this? And I already told you why we bought it. We bought it because we wanted something relatively low-end. We wanted to learn before we made a big investment. And I had originally intended to spend, I don't know, whatever it took to get all high-end Sandvik tooling. I wanted to run all insert tooling. I wanted to run the shell mill. I wanted to run some high feed mills. I wanted to run insert drills. I wanted to run you know, insert-based shoulder mills. Unfortunately, it's really difficult. When you're a one-man shop like we are, or, or one machine shop like we are, these tooling companies, they are gonna invest their time and energy in machine shops that have 10, 20, 30 machines and are gonna go through, you know, I don't know, half a million dollars a year in tooling. Not someone like me who might only go through a couple thousand dollars a year in tooling, right? And so, so that's been one of the, the hurdles that we're really, we're trying to kind of clear at this point in time. I don't regret buying one of these, but I will tell you this, it, these were like 400 bucks and you got a face mill, you got a, you got a, four, a four insert shell mill, you got some end mill holders, you got some ER32 holders, got some collets. It was a bargain. However, I will say this, it's, it's important to be careful. Not all of these fit in the machine. Not all of these go in and out of our tool changer the same, right? And so the last thing you wanna do is tear up your brand new or, or expensive, whether it's new or not, expensive CNC mill with some crappy tool holder. So I actually, before I put all these in the machine, I was actually super anal. I actually measured all of them with mics and stuff like that as, as best I could just to make sure that everything looked good. I measured them against one of our Sandvik tool holders that we got the day we got the machine. And so everything seemed okay. A couple of them, this one in particular, is a little sticky in and out of the taper. Don't know why, there's no nicks, dents, or anything else, but there's definitely a place for them. In the future, I'm gonna be making videos on how to select tools for a variety of different applications. Just as I learn, I'll share it with you guys. That's all there is to it. And so if you guys have advice or specific brands of tooling that you guys prefer, I wanna hear about it. Some of my buddies love the Goering stuff. I have a couple of my friends love the Iskar stuff, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I reached out to a couple of different tooling companies that never that never responded back, but at this point, I think I'm leaning towards a bunch of the Iskar stuff, and I really like the idea of having some insert-based tooling. There was a guy trolling me not too long ago, right here on YouTube, just bashing on me. There's other places besides Lakeshore Carbide. Well, this is for that guy. Listen, man, 
I use Lakeshore Carbide because Carl's been nothing but good to me. I think they sell a high quality product and every time I'm kind of at a loss, as a new, as someone new to CNC machining, Carl always has taken the time to help me out. I don't get any discount, I don't get any commission, anything like that. I buy stuff from Lakeshore Carbide, which I found out about from NYC CNC, there's no secret about that, but I buy stuff from Lakeshore Carbide because they treat me good. I'm a little bit blown away. I come from the marketing industry, the direct marketing industry, where a lot of entrepreneurs design and develop products and then they go direct to the market with them through TV commercials, direct mail, magazine ads, and things like this. It's surprising to me to see this tooling industry kind of running on this like legacy business model where they only want to sell things through distributors and dealerships and stuff like that. When a lot of times, even the dealers and distributors that are selling their tools aren't really all that well versed in them, right? When I was looking, when I was actually looking to put this Digec QM mini modular head on the mandrel for a Cat 40 taper tool holder, you can't even find one in stock anywhere and they didn't even know what I was talking about when I called up the distributor looking for it. So anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button. If you wanna be notified when new videos are released, subscribe and click on the, subscribe and click on the note. <laughs> Subscribe and click on the notification bell and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.